This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Audible. Time to get our HD Nation on. Hey, let's say you got an amazing collection of Blu-rays, because owning a collection of your favorite movies means having the best quality you can get. You want that good quality, you love your Blu-rays, and hey, maybe those Blu-rays are taking up too much space on the wall, or your husband forgets to put them away, or your toddler keeps figuring out ways to use them to play hockey on the sidewalk out in front of your house. Keeping your disc collection in pristine condition is a challenge, even if you don't have a small kid in the house. Now, Creating a backup, though, it protects your investment and makes them easy to play back on more devices around your house. You back them up on a home server or one of your machines. Totally. Uh, You're the king of this. Personally, yeah, I back <laughs> up all of my movies so that I'm not harassed by messages from the FBI in Scotland Yard. Mm -hmm. And those forced movie previews, uh, they can suck it, too. I'm Bye -bye. done with those. Yeah, nine minutes of previews or clicking no, to get no. through the previews, yeah. so irritating. We're figuring out the combo to get past it all. Also, movie studios, they spend endless <laughs> millions making it difficult for the disc owners to free the content contained within. The movies on discs are encrypted so that only approved players and display devices can access that content. Nowadays, disc protection is taking the form of digital watermarking and even playback taking happening within a virtual machine on the player itself. They're getting pretty crafty about how they're doing this. It's all pretty crazy. Now look, let me tell you this right now. Technically, what we're telling you how to do is a violation of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Oh yeah. The United States law that says it's illegal to take a disc you have if it has copy protection on and back it up so it's easier to use and protect it. I would also think about something called fair use as well and right. give a good look up on what that means and what we're talking about today. However, if you want to back up your Blu-rays or even DVDs nowadays, you're going to need a regularly updated tool to get around right. the obstacles, namely the copy DRM, protection. Copy protection. Right. You could visit a terrific resource like the good folks at videohelp.com and experiment with some of their latest techniques. This is a terrific resource that only deals with video encoding but also uh, different protections and different disks out there and how to work with those different systems. Now, other tools that you could use, well, basically, there's a couple of great ones out there. One called Make MKV, and let me show you that real quick. Terrific tool. This actually is a program that will take your DVDs and Blu-ray discs, work around the DRM that's on there, and it will convert that into a fairly portable file called an MKV file, in case you don't know what that is. Uh, and that will then allow you then to play it back on a variety of portable devices, including a lot of the new Blu-ray players and TVs that support MKV files. MKV, like an AVI file, is just a wrapper uh, mm -hmm. that can contain a variety of different file types, including video formats and audio formats. The MKV wrapper just makes it really easy to then distribute that and use it on a variety of devices out there. Now, another great piece of software that I'm using is something from the good folks at Slysoft called AnyDVD HD. Now, this is another circumvention tool that makes it pretty darn effective for uh, basically getting around that DRM we were talking about. Now, when this is running in the background, a nice thing that it will do is basically allow you to access the content on those encrypted disks. So if you just want to peruse the file structure, say, on your new Blu-ray disk and look for the biggest video, fi or video, fold or video file that's on there for conversion, this will allow you then to circumvent the DRM, access those files directly, and look at it. Now, the other big decision you're going to come up with once you start basically circumventing that protection, getting at the video files you want, is how do you want to back up this content? Right. Do you want to basically create a disk image that contains everything on the disk, or perhaps you want that in a folder structure that also contains all of the information? Right, basically, like, do you want, do you want all of the extra features? Do you want all of the extra stuff? Do you want to pretend you actually have the entire Blu-ray and access that? Or do you want to do what Robert does and be like, I want the start of the movie to the end of the movie, and I don't want to back up the rest yeah. of it? Currently, because I'm unaware of what the future may bring, I am a real big proponent, if you have the space, just to back up everything. Right. I take the whole DVD, rip it, back it up, and that way it's sitting there if I want to manipulate it later on. Maybe I want to watch those trailers. Right. Maybe I want to see the extra content that was on the <laughs> disc. Uh, maybe I just want to then, later down the road, switch it to different video formats. Maybe I like MKV today, maybe I want H.264, specific H.264 mm -hmm. for tomorrow. Having the full disc backup allows me to then do that in a later date, and that's one beautiful thing with it. Now, when I do want to recompress files, there's a terrific free piece of software out there that's been around for a while called Handbrake, and let me pull that up. Wonderful Handbrake has been around. It's arguably my favorite way of taking those video files that you have and converting it into other compressed video formats. I use the Windows version quite a bit, and here I'll pull up the interface for it to give you an idea. Uh, this is also available on OS X as well. 
uh, essentially, I can use this to not only recompress my large video file into something smaller, I can also do this to create something like a digital copy that will play back on my phone or portable player. And I, I, this is just a great way to get more functionality out, mm -hmm. of, the, out of the content that you already have. Right backed up. Runs on Windows, runs on OS X, it's easy to use, there's lots of help available online. And, and we should make something really clear. Don't rent a Blu-ray or a DVD and rip it and keep a copy of it. Don't buy it and rip it and then sell it. Do us a favor, be honest. You know, if you're going to make up backup copies of stuff, keep the disc. Because um, that, that would be your backup in the phone. Right. I have a few hundred Blu-ray movies at home. And Either I'm not going to rip every single one of them, I'm going to rip my favorites, and then if I, I'm, not, I'm not worried about backing up that video mm -hmm. information because I have the original discs. Right. If, I lose the, if I lose my eight terabytes of video, it's going to cost me a long weekend, basically, or maybe <laughs> probably a few long weekends to restore it, but I haven't lost anything, so well, it's, it's, it's not like my personal files when you talk about backing up data. It's a question we get asked pretty often, like, you know, you, you, you've created your backups, and you're like, okay, well, should I back them up in the cloud, right? You're worried about your house burning down. The files can take up a ridiculous amount of space. Classic question, if I have eight terabytes of video, can I back it up online? Short answer for most of us is no. If you have to, a, a typical like Comcast a monthly cap is 250 gigabytes. That means you would spend two and a half years just uploading those files to online storage and just as long downloading them if you didn't do anything else with your internet connection that month. If you did nothing but upload those disks, those, those images, it would take you years to get several terabytes of data up there. Seriously, for massive collections, it's probably less costly to back up locally. And if these are, you know, Blu-ray DVD backups, the backups are the discs themselves. You kept them, right? Because you pay for the discs, you take care of the people who make the movies for you, so they keep making movies for you, and you keep the discs safe, so you've got a backup of those files. It's a nice thing to do. And you don't have to worry about your, you know, if you store them on a high shelf, you don't have to worry about your toddler flinging them around oh, the room. Oh, storage containers <laughs> in a room off the property. Yeah, <laughs> that's where the original data goes. That's a good idea. So in a future episode, Robert's going to show us what he's done to actually make those files available to his home theater PC, to Blu-ray players, HDTVs with built-in playback, your portable devices. It's really cool. We'll show that on HD Nation in a future episode. Techzilla.com or HDNation.tv. That's the website where you can find this. If you want to ask us a question, well, hey, why don't you try our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Techzilla. And if you got a minute, like us, or actually, I guess, like us, thumbs up, right? Hey, right now, though, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors before we come back and talk about some of our favorite backup tools and just exactly how World Backup Day started. Audible.com, they are amazing. They're the leading provider of downloadable digital audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. Audible has over 100,000 titles to choose from, to be downloaded to your iPod or MP3 player and played back anywhere, anytime. It's an incredible thing. It's, it's just an amazing selection of books, every genre, science fiction, thrillers, drama, comedy, business, history, and more. One of my favorites right now, the movies are raging, but I'm trying to get through The Hunger Games before I go see the movie, because that's the way I roll. I'm a lit major, even though I minored in film studies. I want to finish the book before I see the movie, The Hunger Games. Check it out. You want to try a free audiobook? We got a hookup for you. Audiblepodcast.com slash Techzilla. You'll get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up, and you'll be supporting Techzilla. AudiblePodcast.com slash Techzilla. Get a free audiobook you can keep forever.